I've been trying to put up the rest of my peppers today. I've got some going in the dehydrator out on the porch. Of course, I've been making pe pepper, pickled peppers with them. And then I've also been freezing some. So I like to freeze on things like this. I like to do it on a baking sheet. And I put this in the freezer. And then once they're frozen, I take it back out and kind of scoop them up and put them in bags. And that way, they don't uh, stick together. And so in the winter, if I'm making a stir fry or a soup or a stew or whatever it is that I'm making, I can just kind of get me a handful out of the bag instead of worrying about them all being stuck together. They smell so good too. Another thing I've been doing today is I've cut up two of my big kushaw. So I've got two big bowls of kushaw here that I'm gonna put in the freezer. Now, I love to leave the kushaws that's winter squash. They last so well. If you watch my videos, I recently shared in one of the videos, um, I was making supper and it was a kushaw that was from 2021 and it had been sitting in my floor, in my kitchen floor in here all that time. So I really love winter squash because they, they last like that. Now you do kind of have to keep an eye on them if you have a bunch, like I've got butternuts that we grew this year. I'll every once in a while, I'll go through and kind of keep an eye on them. And if I see one with a bad place, then I will either hurry and eat that one or go ahead and process it and put it in the freezer. This year, when I brought mine in, I've had two of my biggest ones already start around the, um, where the stem is, started getting black, getting a little brown around there, black really. And so I realized they're not gonna make it till next year. They're not even gonna make it another month. So I need to go ahead and process them. So it could be that just sometimes that's, that happens. Some of them cure really good and then some of them don't. But another reason this year might've happened to me is that usually I leave them in the, in the garden where they're at until the stem totally, you know, kind of dies back to the point that it just breaks off and they're just laying there. And I leave them laying there. Well, this year we had a cooler, kind of fall, so that might have had something to do with it, but I don't really think that was it. But the other thing I usually do is once I do take them out of the garden, I carry them and I put them on our front porch, which is covered, and I leave them out there really till really cold weather gets here, till like it might get you know below freezing overnight. And I didn't get to do that this year. I did lay them there for about a week, but then we had our house stained. And when we had our house stained, I had to do something with them, so I brought them into the house and I put them in my kitchen. So maybe it was that I didn't let them cure outside in the air enough, or maybe it was just one of those, those things that uh, these two were just not meant to last long. So I'm freezing my kushaw in five cups because I, we love to make kushaw soup. I, we love kushaw soup and that's, it takes five cups to make soup. If I decide I want to um, unfreeze a pack and make pies or roast them or something like that, again, this is like to, to roast for supper, that again would be a good, um, a good amount. Although once you freeze things like squash, they have so much uh, water, so much moisture in them. A lot of times they're not as good roasted, but, but we eat a lot of kushal soup. Kushal soup and a cake of cornbread and you don't even need any meat. It's just, just one of the things we really enjoy. And so to seal the bag, I just seal it almost all the way up and then kind of if you store, or for me, my freezer is kind of full. So if I store them like this, I can store more than if I set them up. So kind of stacking them all in a stack in the freezer like that works better for me than if I just left it like that. So I seal it almost all the way up and turn it over, kind of push them down into a flat layer and then kind of fold them over and make sure that all the air or, you know, almost all the air. Of course, you could use a food saver or something like that and get all the air, but this works pretty good.
beautiful nasturtium. I'm out here in the garden looking around to see if there's anything I can harvest. We've had the thread of frost and it's actually frosted kind of all around us here, but it's not frosted right here at my house. But tonight's the night. In the morning, it's supposed to be in the 20s. So I know it'll definitely freeze tonight. Then actually the next several days is supposed to be in the 20s. Really unusual to have that cold um, temperatures this early. This is October. So I'm gonna see if there's any more. I wish I could harvest all these beauties and take them in with the leaves, but, but I can't. It's so pretty though. So lovely. But I am gonna see what kind of peppers or anything else I can find. I've got a couple of uh, green tomatoes and I'll look around. The only tomatoes left up here, I think, are Tommy Toes, but I'm gonna go over everything and just see what I find so that I can make sure to get every bite of goodness. I actually got the harvested most of the peppers about a week ago or two when I thought that it was going to frost and it didn't, but I knew I probably missed some. And then when it didn't frost, I never did come back out and check. But here's definitely a few. So I actually see quite a few little um, cayennes that I missed, so I'm going to pick them. I think I'll put them in my pocket. Ooh, that one's bad, so I won't be taking that one in. There's one. Boy, I, I missed a lot when I got them the other day. On the cayennes, anyway. Some of them are still way too tiny to, to really worry about. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and harvest my one pumpkin back here and I'm gonna carry it to the porch before this cold weather arrives. This is my Asian persimmon tree, kind of hanging on here. I guess it's about two years old, but boy, aren't the leaves beautiful. Maybe someday it'll produce for me. When I was gathering seeds, I noticed a little bee buddy here. He's getting the last little part that he can get before the cold weather arrives tonight. This is his last hoorah before cold weather arrives. I've grown nasturtiums for years and years, but they've never been as pretty as they are this year. Just look at this. Is this not lovely? And it's been like this all summer long. I'm afraid that it's going to be gone though in the next few days and it'll just kind of wilt down. If you've never ate nasturtium leaves, or you can eat the leaves, you can eat the stems, and you can eat the flowers. They have a real Kind of a peppery but not peppery peppery like radishes and how cabbage can even be kind of peppery sometimes that's the that's what they taste like so i guess you either like that or you don't i do like it and they're supposed to be very medicinal like a natural antibiotic as something flies into my eye but it flew back out and what i want to look at though i want to dig down in here and see if i see any seeds on this one So, there's some. So I want to make sure that I save them for next year. And those are actually edible too, but I'm going to put them in my little basket here and take them in and let them dry. And then I'll have some to plant for next year. I figured as big as this plant is, there'd be a lot of them down in here. There's some more.
So Matt just built our first fire of the winter season. So we're both pretty excited. We always look forward to the first fire, even though we kind of put it off. It's already been cold, but we kind of wait as long as possible till we feel like we really need a fire. It's kind of a joyous occasion, ain't it, Matt? It is, I like it. Yeah. So Matt's got his water. We always keep water on the back of the stove just to put moisture back in the, in the air. We fill it up as we put wood into the fire if it needs it. One of the neat things that Matt bought this year, this is new to us, is this kindling, what do you call it, Matt? Kindling cracker. Kindling cracker. So he mostly bought it for me and the girls because we have a hard time sometimes if there's not, if Matt's, if we run out of kindling, if Matt's gone or something, so that we could more easily do it, but he will certainly use it too. But it's really handy. I'm gonna let Matt explain to you how it works. Pretty simple, it's just got a, a bit affixed down inside the frame and you just put your wood, your kindling or whatever it is you're wanting to split on it and then you can use a hammer and you're not up here with a trying to hold a piece of wood with a sharp axe bit or hatchet bit trying to get it started to get it split because the bit's down here. And you just drive it down on the hammer and it splits it and it's much safer, more efficient, works quite well. And you can even do uh, larger pieces of wood too if you want to split your some of your bigger pieces down smaller it works quite well
like that, but I, I learn so slow I can't. If I do it. Save that for that another short. time. Yeah, but I, I would like to do that for variety. It's actually but. easier once you learn it than yeah. what you're trying to do. Alright, let's play well, with this all. How would that be? Okay. <laughs> That's even faster. Than it I was. know. I was like warp speed. Okay, so okay, I'm slowing it down this time for real. If today was the day God should take your life away, if you. But word-wise, it was. You yeah, know. as we slowed down, y'all could get all the words in. Yeah, that's somehow just easy to get fast. Uh, I got to focusing too much on my guitar when I'd go to E at Sound Out of Tune and some of those places like... I probably got my voice probably got off-key there. Well, I mean, I knew it when it happened. It happened two or three times. 